Hey, boar's head. Right, I've seen a um, couple of people ask for a ride in, in the forums and how to tune four-wheel drive cars and someone did ask how to tune a Skyline. So I thought I'd do a video on how to tune a Skyline. So I went into A-Class and look who we have as a rival in a Skyline. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to tune the Skyline. I'm going to keep it four-wheel drive. I'm going to show you how I tune it and why. And we're going to put it in challenge against Race Boy 77 Skyline. See how we crack on. So at the moment I've just loaded up a standard tune just because it wouldn't let me load it in a B class. So what we're going to do now is we're going to reset the car to stop. It's going to be a quick build. What we're going to do is just throw the parts on, throw the tune together and see where we come. So appearance wise and race body kit wise I don't generally put the rear wing on four wheel drive cars or front wheel drive cars just because I like the look of it without it and the original look and it doesn't give much benefit if I was to run a spoiler I'd probably run it on zero downforce anyway so without ones often better so what we're going to do is we're going to put the front bumper on race rear bumper on race and we're going to put the hood on drive line we're going to go for transition differential wheels, we're going to go for the lightest wheels, tyres, we're going to put some rear tyre whip on, full tyres on pound, full brakes, race springs, race roll bars, full weight reduction, and then we're going to go for the exhaust. Where we're going to be. So we've got money through that again. We've got a front bumper race, rear bumper race, hood race or light, transmission race, drive line first one, differential race. Wheels, we have the lightest wheels, pick which ones you like, but I just throw these on. These are heaviest, these are lightest, these are one up from lightest, but it's just easy to find to tune. So Tire compound full, rear tire width full, full brakes, race springs, race roll bars, full weight reduction, first flywheel, and the second exhaust. Those are the parts. I'm going to tune it. Now, if you've seen the other videos on tire pressure, explaining why. I like to run lower pressures, higher on the rear. There's a video there, tire tuning tips. There's also another tuning guide where I tune an NMR2. I'm going to show you the tricks, why you change things and what the outcomes are, how to create oversteer and understeer. So what we're doing now is we're done the tires, 24 and 26 gearing. It's a four wheel drive car, so we're going to gear it right down, right down. So we go 35, we're going to go 60. So that's 35 mile an hour. This is now 25 mile an hour gear. Now you're not going to want to be, you're always going to want to be the same or shorter on the gear. You're not going to want longer gears. So we go to 100, 120, 140. forward like that and there we go 35 60 80 100 120 140 alignment we're going to go camber 2.0 1.5 zero zero toe is a good place to start if you're tuning a car and um, so if you're using toe that would increase your turning by going towards the out positive and uh, toe will increase your turning and the reaction from the front 
positive tone on the rear will increase the reaction from the rear. Generally leave that like that. That would slow down the reaction on the rear. That would slow down the reaction on the front. So I generally get a slightly quicker turn in, a zero rear toe, and then I increase the cast all the way because that one will increase the camber on the front wheels as you turn in. So roll bars on a four wheel drive car, you're gonna want your roll bars really soft on the front. We're gonna go down to five. We're gonna go really hard on the rear. We've got to 35, we could possibly go more. We're gonna use that at the moment. So what this does is basically by having a soft front end and a stiff rear end, when you turn into a corner and you load up sideways, basically, you know, you go into a right hand corner and you load up the right hand tires, the rear tires are gonna load up the weight first because the, the roll bars are harder. So it's gonna transition the weight quicker to the tire. So it's gonna create oversteer. The front's gonna be a bit softer and aid the back in coming around. So on a four wheel drive, you can really manipulate these roll bars. If you were to go the other way and have a hard front end and a soft rear end, the car would understeer into a bend as you went in, the front would load up the tire first and that would start losing the corner before the rear did. So it cause understeer. So this is oversteer. And if you were to go this way, this would be massive amounts of understeer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to five. That's a nice stop. We're going to go back to 30. For the second time around. And then the springs, we're going to bring down to about, we're going to go 620 on the front there. Keep slightly stiff, but to the softer side. We're going to go to 600. Now the only reason I've done this is so, again, this will just help control the rear. Because I've set it up for quite a lot of oversteer, you're going to want to control the flick on the rear. So by having a softer rear end here, it will just allow a little more cushion on the back end as it sort of moves and won't be so flicky. So ride height, we're going to run down. We're going to, keep, we're going to click the rear up one. Again, this increases oversteer slightly. Also reduces um, the front end load on braking because you're already in a sort of stance set up. So Bump stiffness, this is generally my go-to bump stiffness. They can adjust this slightly, but because this is, you can have this lower because it is a front heavy car, you can have it slightly lower on the rear, but because it's four wheel drive, I'm gonna actually have it the same because I want it, again, oversteering slightly, so I want it to rotate around the corner. And then we're gonna give the roll center, this is much like roll bars, but nowhere near as extreme just light clicks on this and this creates the same this would be oversteer this would be understeer essentially that's what you'd end up with so what I do is I give it a slight amount of extra rotation this helps control the roll bars so that it helps make the roll bars not so flicky if these are set the same way slightly so with the anti-dive we bring that down to 10. Just want it slightly softer. Bring that down. Tell you what we're bring that down to 5. I'm going to leave that on 9. And we're going to add full front arrow. Again, this is just to give it a stiffer rear. If you wanted it easy on the accelerator as you apply the power, you can have a softer rear like this. Same with braking. This will make it better for turning in softer. Harder will load up the tires quicker, but you just don't want to be squeezing the brakes all the way anyway. So I can generally get away with having it down here. And the aero full up on the front, no aero on the rear. Brake balance, we're gonna go 47, 130. See if it goes down anymore anyway. Yeah, 45, 130. Now here's with the diff. So the diff but on the front of the car, this is more slip. This is more control. So this will basically allow the wheels to spin at separate speeds because the outside wheel travels a different distance to the inside wheel. So this will give you more control. 
and on the rear wheel drive it works opposite. This will give you more control. This will give you more slip. So what I do is I control the front and I allow the back to slip as much as possible. Again, that helps create the rotation. I run zero deceleration because by running this up, it'll give you control into the bends a little bit, but it will steer away. It will steal away from your overall turning circle. So I generally keep that on zero. And then I'm gonna run my torque up to 90% on the rear. That is it trimmed, hopefully. It's all an experiment, but there we go. So we've done the tune. We're now going to test it against the uh, Weibull. Here's our Weibull. Here's our time. Two minutes ten. Point six four five. Let's give ourselves all the help we can get. So I felt we're going to be. 212. 212. Well, we've got two seconds quicker than a doubt, haven't we? So. Your instructor is one of the finest pilots this program has ever produced. His exploits are legendary. What he has to teach you may very well mean the difference between life and death.
just want to say a big shout out to Race Boy 77. I have raced him and used his tunes. They are good. He is a good racer. I did want to set myself a bit of a challenge here, so um, you know we succeeded. But I hope you learned something. That's how I generally tune a four-wheel drive car going forward with little tweaks here and there. You might want to adjust yourself. I've got other tuning guides if you want to check them out on a 280 MR2 mid-engine rear-wheel drive. I've also got a Fair Lady Z C-Class tune video that I've put up there. Um, I've got other tunes coming. I'm going to be concentrating on doing a front-wheel drive tune for you all very soon. So you can see how we set up a front-wheel drive car to create the rotation and eliminate the wheel spin and stuff that you get from them cars. Um, like I said, I've really enjoyed doing this challenge. Hopefully Race Boy 77 comes back at us with another one. And... Um, we can do something else so if you've enjoyed it hit the like button and subscribe and uh, thanks again for watching and uh, yeah check out my other content and check the channel over the next couple of weeks for more tuning guides coming out hopefully this uh, sets you off tearing up those times on the tarmac um yeah keep it clean out there and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching guys